Without further ado, let's get to the very first, I feel most important question, which is, what are the public health guidelines for living on campus this fall? So glad you asked that question. That is the question. So let's start at the most important thing, the thing that's actually making living on campus this fall possible. Students who are living in Michigan housing this fall are required to submit to the university proof of vaccination. So you've heard that maybe a couple weeks ago, the news has gotten out there definitely. But I want you to know that is still the requirement for living in housing. The deadline for reporting to the university proof of your vaccination is July 16th. So it's coming up, still have time, but if you've got that proof right now, waste no time, go over to Wolverine Access. There are COVID-19 resources and report your vaccination information to the university. This is a requirement. How required is it? Absolutely required, right? It's, it's what's making fall possible. Now, because of that vaccine requirement, that means other things can happen in the halls. So one of the most basic ones will be our public health restrictions, which were in place right now and in previous semesters of the last year, a lot of those are gonna be changing. So since vaccination is a requirement, face coverings and social distancing will not be required for students who are vaccinated and report their vaccinations. Now, for those students who may have been granted an exemption, yes, uh, face coverings and vaccinate, uh, face, face coverings and social distancing is still required. We definitely are, uh, definitely are following all those guidelines. We're following all the public health ones. And it's worth noting that, of course, this is still an evolving situation. As much as we want to close the page on the pandemic, the truth is that we are evolving. So the guidelines that I'm talking to you right now about students not needing face coverings and social distancing, if they've been vaccinated, that's because public health guidelines have evolved. We're watching those, we're always following the best advice for fall, but just know that these things can change. But our plans right now is to go back to as much as we can to that traditional uh, residential experience. The reason why we're all here, right? This is a place of innovation, but also tradition. Some traditions you wanna keep, and definitely that in-person residential experience is something that's key to housing and the vaccination requirement is making that possible. So another question about, will regular testing be required? Students who may know students who are on campus right now know that regular testing is definitely something that we've done all winter and in spring and summer terms as well. So again, because of the vaccination requirement, if students have reported their vaccinations to the university, they do not need to participate in mandatory regular uh, testing, COVID testing. Again, students who do not submit proof of their vaccinations or who have been granted an exemption, they will be participating in mandatory regular COVID testing, which we track. And there's a great app, which you probably know all about by now, called Response Blue, which will have a lot of the information there about your t testing and your vaccinations up to date. So just know that regular testing, it's not necessary because of the vaccination requirement. So if you've got submitted your proof, you are set and good to go. So let's get to the next question. That's a great one, right? It's just, it's just the tip of the iceberg, cause lots of other changes, right? Here's another question, which is definitely related to that. Will we be able to have guests in our room from in campus or off campus? The answer is yes, yes. It's definitely possible to have guests both from another room down the corridor or in your building or from off campus. Now, again, the same requirements uh, apply. So out, outside guests are gonna be expected to use the Response of Blue app. And outside guests, if they've been vaccinated, they've submitted proof of their vaccination, they will not need to socially distance or wear face coverings. But if those outside guests have not been vaccinated or have not reported to the university, they should expect to wear face coverings and socially distance. They should also expect to use that Response of Blue app, which will be an expectation for students who are traveling from space to space around campus. You may be asked to demonstrate that to someone there at the front desk or checking into a place. So just know that. But the big picture here is absolutely. Get togethers are now going to be possible. That is one of the key things about the residential experience. It's one of the reasons why people wanna live on campus is so that they can be with other people in a space and that's gonna be possible. Guess Absolutely. So next question, again, tied on to that. This is quite a popular one. 
Will the lounges and kitchens and community spaces be open? The answer again is yes, absolutely. They will be open. We are going to be programming for those spaces as well. There'll be study spaces that you can reserve or just drop into with a group. The kitchens again will be available for you to have get togethers, bake cookies, whatever you need to do to build community in space. Because again, there's a vaccine requirement for all students living on campus. In addition to that, we're going to be going back to our programming. A lot of that's going to be in person, the in person programming that we love. We also know that it really works for a lot of people to have a hybrid option. So expect those as well. We're a big campus. It's fantastic when sometimes a program that's being hosted in one hall can be made open, available virtually to students all over, North Campus, Hill, Central. Hybrid options that we've got pretty good at in the last few months, they actually make that possible. So expect a mixture of both in-person stuff and hybrid programming. I'm, I'm excited. We're taking the best of the last 15 months and then going back to what we've known works really, really well. So it's going to be good. Okay, now it is time to get to, I think, for me, is the bread and butter, the assignments process. Uh, we're basically telling you what room you've got, how that process works, all of it. This is June in our process. We had a lot of questions about this because, of course, the housing deadline for applying for first years was May 5th. So by now, it's been over a month since you turned your application. Some of you may have heard, I'd say the overwhelming majority haven't heard yet, and that's perfectly normal. So first, let me give you a sense of what this is gonna be like. How will students, this, this is the question, how will students find out their room assignments? So this is how you're gonna find out your room assignment. Students are gonna get an email sent only to their UMICH email account with the subject line, urgent all capital letters, housing contract available. And that's kind of our subtle, clever way of saying that this is urgent and your housing contract is available. When you see an email from us that says urgent in all caps, honestly, if you see any email from us, open that email, just go for it. Don't wait for just the right moment for you to open that email. You don't need to have your family and friends gathered around you. Just open the email. That's your housing contract. It is time sensitive. I'll get to that in a moment. But just know that we're going to communicate using that UMICH email account. Now, I know from experience that some students actually prefer text alerts. It's happened for a lot of us. We've been online more than ever before. Text alerts work for a lot of students. And if that's what you prefer to kind of stay on top of things that are happening from the University of Michigan, then in that case, what I recommend is that you check your email because we will not be sending you text alerts that your housing contract is available. We'll be sending it to your UMICH email. The whole university functions on its UMICH email. Just good to know that, right? It's just as easy to check that UMICH email as it is to check your messages. Honest, honestly, it is. So stay on top of it and look for that email from housing that says urgent, housing contract available. Now, when will this important email arrive? As I noted earlier, some students, a small fraction have already heard for any number of reasons. Maybe they're in a particular program or they had a particular accommodation that we needed to get to right away. But honestly, it takes us throughout June and all of July, just about, to be done with the housing assignments. So I'd say if you haven't heard from us by July, everything is actually working as it's supposed to. If it's the end of July and you haven't heard from us, feel free to drop us a line at housing uh, at umich.edu and say, hey, you know, I just want to check in. Is my housing application still in the mix? Are you still working on it? We'll be happy to let you know that we're working on it or what's the deal with it. But yeah, it does take us a while to get through all of these assignments. It just does. So I'd say you can relax because first years can be confident that they will get housing on campus. There are a lot of first years. So we take our time making sure we're getting this as right as we can. Now, why does it take that long, right? Why not? Isn't it just automatic? The truth and we know this, this may be hard to believe because you're in this webinar, you love the University of Michigan. Turns out actually every year, a chunk of students who want, say they want housing, who say they're going to Michigan in the summer, change their minds. Maybe they're going off campus. Maybe they're going to another university, right? Ultimately, that's on them. But what that means is that if they had a room that we were giving them, we can now free that room up and it could be perfect for you exactly the room that you would love, right? Meeting all of your preferences. 
So we want to make sure that we've got a clear sense of who's coming and who isn't. And that can sometimes take a while because people tell us a little bit later in the season. However, that's why we want, we want to give you plenty of time, though, to get your things together. So end of July is when we aim to get a lot of these housing assignments done. But it could, in many cases, take to the middle of August. That's normal. But also feel free to drop us a line. Check in on that, you know? We, we want to help you. Let's see, next question. Oh, uh, what are the chances I can get a different room? So, perfect question, in some ways the question. Easy rule of thumb when it comes to Michigan housing. The room you've been assigned is basically the room you are going to move into. We expect to be pretty full. So when we give you a housing assignment, that's not kind of the opening round of a month long of negotiations with you. The truth is, when we give the housing assignment, we find the best possible place and we've got lots of other students who need places as well. So that's basically going to be your housing assignment. Just know that if that makes you feel like, hey, you know what, suddenly it's out of my control now. I can relax, right? Think of it that way. That's a good thing, right? We'll send you the housing assignment, that's it. You're not required to take it, but just let us know if you're going to. These are good questions. You guys ask the hot button questions, right? You found the key issues. All right, so someone came up a different way of asking that exact same question, which I like. I appreciate the tenacity. It marks you out as a Wolverine. What are my options for changing to a new room later? Right, well, so at, over the pandemic, we had to really limit the number of room changes because the whole game here is not having populations change places, right? That's not good for public health. This year, we will reopen our processes, room change and room swap. There are two different processes where you can go either on a wait list if a room comes available, or you can go online and search a bulletin board of other students who want to swap their rooms. Both of those have uh, certain rules to follow and certain time periods. The room change process will begin after students have moved in. Now, it's important to remember, this isn't like a hotel where people are checking in and out all the time. There isn't a ton of shifting around. Right, because people aren't just leaving after two weeks of the semester, there isn't too much movement. So, you know, it could take a little while for rooms to come available if they become available at all. I would say that when you get your housing assignment, look where it is, read about that place, and then go in ready to make that place your home. Because ultimately, it's the people that you know there that's going to make it feel like home. When you're at home in the summer, this is all just real estate to you. Right? It's just monopoly. Some places are better than other places, you're thinking to yourself. But that's actually not how it is. The place that you're going to remember, the place that you're going to want to be, is a place where you actually know it, people on your corridor, and they're happy to see you when you're back. Right? That is an eternal truth. It's like summer camp. It really doesn't matter what patch of mosquito-ridden forest it's in. It's the people that you find there. I went to summer camp once. It's based on an experience of one, but I feel like it was pretty representative. It was in Adrian, Michigan. So again, not mosquito bitten, but not a lot's happening there apart from the community. Apologies to students coming from Adrian. Next question. Once I get the contract email, am I done? Uh, the answer is no, you are not done. You should click through to view your contract. And from there, you've got five days, five business days to review that housing assignment, decide if you want it, and then submit it back to us. You've got to do that part, right? That's the part that says, hey, I want this room. Please don't give it to someone else. It also says, by the way, that I am contractually obligated to pay for that room and board for that space. Students, if you are 17 at the time that you get that housing contract, you're going to need to print it out somehow or make a PDF of that contract and then have a parent sign it somehow and then email us back a PDF or a scan of that uh, document with the parent or guardian signature, that's going to be what makes it a valid uh, contract. You just email it to us. We'll process it. I promise you. Don't need to worry. Now, again, why five days? Is that is that draconian, Amir? No one asked that directly, but I felt it was the tone of the question. Uh, no, it's not. Because again, remember, there are students we know who maybe are going to other schools. That's, again, ultimately their mistake, right? Fine. But we need to know so we can free that room up and offer it to you if it's the perfect room for you. So five days is pretty reasonable. At the end of five days, we are not going to uh, explode the contract. We're going to follow up with you say, hey, 
you know, we sent you this contract. Are you interested? And maybe there was a hitch. Maybe you had a question. Let's solve that. But I'm telling you right now, once you get the housing contract email, first of all, look out for it on your UMICH email. And once you get it, sign that contract if you want the space. Because if you just let that email sit there, the space will evaporate. Because we're going to give it to someone else, right? We want to house people who want to be here. Next question. By the way, I hope you weren't alarmed. Oh, sorry, I correct, correction. I hope you were mildly alarmed by what I just said. It's important for you to have a small degree of like, okay, all right, I'm alert, I'm aware, I'm not anxious, I'm aware this email is coming and I've got to do something. It is time sensitive. Oh, here's a good question. Uh, someone says, someone wrote in saying, hey, I'm going to be out of the country, you know, during some point in the summer. What if the email arrives then? You know, what do I do then? Listen, it is, it never surprises me the incredible things you miss students do over the summer, right? Because they're, they're out there changing the world. They're on Machu Picchu investigating original strains of potato, whatever it is, okay? In this particular case, the last person I talked to, they were vacationing in Mexico at a certain portion. That's also okay. No judgments here. As if you know the dates you're going to be gone, let us know by email at housing at umich.edu. We will drop that into our database and we will know when it comes time to see who hasn't signed the contract that you meant to sign the contract. You were just, you know, investigating paleobotany or whatever it was. That's good. We are more worried about the students who don't get in touch with us at all. So if you know you're going to be away or out of email contact or even sketchy email contact, just let us know ahead of time right now at housing at umich.edu. Next question. This is actually pretty easy. What is the alcohol and other drugs policy? The alcohol and other drugs policy is no. You, could, you probably could have guessed that. Uh, on campus, we observe all state and federal laws in addition to uh, our own requirements, our more stringent requirements. These are spelled out in the Community Living at Michigan Standards. The Community Living at Michigan Standards, called the CLAM for short and affectionately, C-L-A-M. You can look it up on the housing website. And this spells out in great detail, not just our alcohol and other drugs policy, but really all of the policies that you need to know. That and the housing terms and conditions, those are two key documents that lay out the expectations of what it means to live here. So take a look at it. You'll be able to review that alcohol and other drugs policy. You'll see our smoking policy is the campus smoking policy, which is again, no, this is a non-smoking campus. Some students uh, requested substance-free rooms, and we try to make that happen if you request it. It must be very important. That causes some other students to wonder, okay, well, if some rooms are substance-free, does that mean other rooms are not substance-free? The answer is no. They are all substance-free. Just a substance-free designation really is telling the community in that corridor that there's a lifestyle that you want to commit to while on campus. It's important to often be with people who have the same vision of what their first year is going to be like, and that can actually strengthen that commitment. So again, all our rooms are essentially substance free, but some people may have requested a particular designation on that room. And many of our Michigan learning communities, all those rooms are going to be substance free rooms. By the way, if you're listening to me and you're like, you know, I have a sense of what he looks like. I don't really need to look at this picture anymore. Feel free to open another tab. Go to the go to housing.umich.edu. Look for the Community Living at Michigan Standards, the CLAM. Type in the CLAM. Look for it. Search it. Investigate it. You'll see it's beautifully laid out, and you can find out everything you need to know about expectations, about behavior, how we treat each other in this community. Stay at the Zoom meeting, though. I'm going to watch the participant number. I don't want it to change. All right, let's get to amenities. This is exciting. It's really, it's really one of the big ones, amenities. What's in the room? What does a room come with? Every room comes with the same basic stuff. You're gonna have a bed, a chair, a desk, a dresser. All beds in our system are extra long twin. So when you bring linens to Michigan and you gotta bring your own linens, bring the extra long twin size. These are popular in stores in the summertime because just about all colleges use that size. And in just about every single case, that furniture is gonna be some version of what's called modular furniture, sometimes building block furniture. And the beauty of that is that it's got that bed, the chair, the desk, the dresser, and you will configure those items yourselves into what you want. So you wanna leave the beds on the floor, leave them on the floor. You wanna make a loft, 
You can actually stack the beds uh, onto the dresser and the desk to make a loft. You can stack the beds on top of each other and make a bunk bed. There are some simple pins, simple pieces put go work, work together. The instructions will be there in your room. No tools are necessary. No special knowledge is necessary. This does not count as an engineering prerequisite in any way. Everyone can do this. Families get together. They do it. It's not like, it's not like an Amish barn raising. Do you know what I mean? It's not that complicated. You can do it. No expertise needed. Just follow the instructions. Make sure you do everything safely according to the instructions right there. And you can make the layout that you want in that room. I promise you, people, people come together building modular furniture. Families helping families. It's a fantastic thing. So question, do I need tools for modular furniture? I answered that already. The answer is no. What you need is resolve, determination, and most importantly, love. Love for each other. Patience, compassion, self-love that you can do this thing. Because honestly, it's just dorm furniture. Everyone, everyone can do this, right? Believe in yourself. I believe in you. I do. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't believe in you. Next question. Can I bring a fridge? Can I, what about a microwave? The answer is yes. You can bring your own small dorm size fridge, your own regular size microwave. We have uh, electrical specs on that document, the Community Living at Michigan Standards. Uh, I apologize if I cannot just rattle off right now exactly how many amps that fridge needs to be. The answer is a small one. Uh, we do limit them one per room. So if you are in a double, that's going to be one fridge, one microwave. Just how the power system works in these areas, the way they're wired. If you're in a quad, four people, how many fridges and microwaves can you have? I'm going to level with you. If you've got a two-person quad, two-room quad, right, two rooms, one room, another room, they're connected somehow. Yep, we can do two microwaves, two fridges, because again, the way these things, the circuits work there. If it's one giant room that that quad is, and you got four beds somewhere else, it's just going to be one fridge, one microwave. That's not me being picky. That's just science. Do you know what I mean? So if you got a problem with it, blame physics. I don't. I don't make those rules. No one made those rules. It's electrons. So if you don't want to lug one of those things to campus, and who does? Well, maybe you do. Maybe you have an older sibling who has one of these things. Uh, we actually work with collegeproducts.com. What is their website? It turns out it's collegeproducts.com. And you can rent a microwave, a fridge, or a micro fridge, both units bolted together for the year. And they'll deliver it before you arrive and pick it up at the end of the year. Very convenient because it's important to know that there is no storage for your stuff over the summertime. So whatever you bring to campus, you got to figure out where, where you're going to put it over the summertime, right? So it can sometimes really work for you to rent a fridge or a microwave or the micro fridge. Check it out, collegeproducts.com. Uh, do you have a list of things to bring to campus? Yes, I'm not going to read that list. I'm going to say, go to housing.umich.edu and the search box, type what to bring. That will pull up a pretty good list of things to bring to campus. Uh, check it out. You don't have to bring everything suggested. A lot of students arrive with some stuff and they just order the rest of it or they get it in Ann Arbor. They feel their way. There's no wrong way to do this thing, okay? But just consult that list of what to bring, search what to bring on the housing website and it'll pull it right out. Okay, is there anything I shouldn't bring to campus? Oh my gosh, I am so glad you asked this question. This is the question I really wanted to answer because while what to bring to campus, it's pretty open-ended. Linens, extra long twin, remember. Uh, what not to bring to campus, that is a very specific and important list that we spell out in great detail in the Community Living at Michigan guidelines. Again, after you've searched what to bring, search prohibited items, prohibited items. It'll pull up that list right away, of what you shouldn't bring. Three big categories of things that are definitely no-nos, okay? If you've got them packed in your mind, unpack them. First category, anything that needs to be on fire to work. Candles, incense, they can't bring those. Second, a humidifier. Is that the opposite of candles? Well, yes, but the point is they interrupt with the fire suppression system and can cause the sprinklers to go off. No humidifiers. Lastly, a router. What is a router? It's an internet thing, you know, a Wi-Fi thing. You don't need one, you can't have one, and there's wireless everywhere. Really good Wi-Fi, better than you realize. 
uh, is happening right now in the holes. And wireless, it's easy, it's seamless. You log in, it's good, you're good to go. Follows you around campus, we're fine. So again, check out that long list of things on the housing website and the clam there. Things like fog machines, tanning beds, trampolines. You cannot bring those things. Now, what if you just say, hey, hold on a second. My whole vision for a first year undergraduate experience involves tanning beds, fog machines, and trampoline. Well, to that, you know, I say, hey, why do you need a tanning bed if there's so much fog, first of all? Right, think about that. But two, we're not judging you. We're just saying for safety's sake, we can't have those things in the halls. Maybe live off campus. If trampolines, tanning beds, and fog machines are that important to you, you gotta find a space that's gonna accommodate them. We can't accommodate them. Living in housing is a choice. You also choose to abide by these guidelines. Is there a laundry service? Uh, the answer is no. We do not do laundry for you. Uh, or have a service that works out that way. There are third parties in town that can arrange to do laundry for you. They cannot come in the halls. You have to meet them outside to drop it off and do the pickup. However, in every residence hall, there's going to be laundry machines where you can experiment with laundry. They are easy to use. There's some basic instructions when you get there and easy to pay for. So dryers are a dollar a cycle there, washing machines $1.25. You don't pay with quarters because it's 2021. There's an app called the Pay Range app. Pay Range, say it one more time, Pay Range. Look it up, get it on your phone. You can just pay for your uh, dryer or washing machine right there. It's easy, it's easy, Pay Range app. How are roommates selected? Good question. So. It really depends on your circumstances here. About half of students want a double room, but they don't have a roommate in mind. And what I'd say there is that uh, we do not use any kind of algorithm drawing on information that you've given us to make any kind of matches there. Basically, we look for room preferences. We try to put them together and we can make those matches that way. Some students use our roommate finder, which is really just a way to browse kind of anonymous profiles of what students were looking for. Like maybe students who had a similar food allergy wanted to room together. If students themselves, you guys themselves, look into this, find someone you want to room with them, let us know, perfect. It becomes difficult if you meet someone over the summer and you want to maybe be roommates. If you've already been assigned, definitely uh, you and that other person can email housing, copying each other with your UMID saying hi, if it's at all possible, we're requesting each other as roommates. That's emailing housing at umich.edu. That allows us to know that you are officially requesting each other mutually. Uh, now, in the cases where you did request a roommate, I will say that we try to make those happen. A couple things can get in the way of a roommate match being made. One is if there's a learning community involved. So living learning programs take precedence over roommate requests. Uh, we, won't, we consider the fact that you want to live in that program to be the most important thing. So if you're say in honors and your roommate that you requested isn't, you can't sort of suck them into a space in honors because that space is then being taken up. Someone else who wants that space who's in honors couldn't be in it. So we'll take precedence with your uh, living learning requests. The other issue, sometimes a uh, health accommodation or religious accommodation will also be in play there that it's really hard to match with the roommate request. We'll re get in touch with you then. We'll say, hey, you know, what's more important? How can, we, how can we make these things come true, as many of them as we can? So by and large, though, we do try to get those roommate requests made. Well, when will we find out who our roommate is? Right? I requested a roommate. Uh, both, both my roommate and I have found out where we're living, but it doesn't say that we're roommates with each other. What do we do then? So that's perfectly normal. Again, it goes back to what I said before. We actually know that lots of students apply, but some students change their minds over the summer. So what we do is we wait till the housing pool is just about settled down end of July to make roommate assignments. There's an email that will go out in the first week of August to your UMICH email account students. We're not gonna send it to any family accounts, third party accounts, Gmail accounts, goes to that UMICH email account. It's got roommate information. It's got some rough room dimensions and it's got some move in stuff to help you plan. So this is the moment to really get in touch with your roommate, plan what you're bringing, get all that down. All right, we're getting down to the last big section here before I get to your individual questions. 
Uh, when is move in? Fantastic. That is the question. Move in this year, general move in is going to be August 25th through August 29th, right? That's it. So mark that in your calendar. Now, you can't just go right now and say, okay, that's the date I want. Because the way move in works is that you will be selecting ahead of time a specific time slot on a particular day that will be your time slot. The reason you do that is the worst part about move in is just traffic. And we found that a way to keep things de-densified and smooth is you're able to arrive at their pre-selected time slot. That smooths things out like you wouldn't believe. You just rock right out there. You'll know that only about 20 people, let's say, at that hour are gonna be moving in. So there's plenty of parking, lots of room in those hallways. We now know in, this, in 2021 that sometimes it's great to avoid lots of people packed into a space all at once. So using move-in time slots de-densifies it. How do you get your move-in time slot? Well, actually in that email that arrives in the first week of August, you will be invited to go online and select a time slot on a particular day from time slots that are available at that moment. So the thing is live. Right, these slots are live right now. So if you get that email, but you don't open it, you just let it go for a couple of weeks and you come back, it's possible the slot that you want will be taken. But I can tell you from experience, if you're on that email, if you're watching it, if you're attentive, right? You don't need to overdo it, just check it once a day, twice, let's do twice a day. Can we get twice a day? I think twice a day is reasonable. I mean, just for this week, then you can lay off later on. Check that email that first week of August, look at those time slots and then just go on you'll probably find something that will work in the range that you're looking for be a little, little flexible i know from experience that some families of course are coming from out of state they want to buy a plane ticket they say hey i need to know right now what day i'm coming in this is what i would recommend travel plans are notoriously tricky right i'm not a travel agent i'm not your travel agent even if i was I would say that if you make a plan to, with, that allows you to move in on one or two days, let's say that you arrive um, Wednesday morning and you're leaving Thursday afternoon, that means that when that time slot email comes in, you've got choices. You can get time slots on Wednesday or you can get time slots on Thursday morning. That gives you a little bit of wiggle room. And again, it's always a good idea to make uh, bookings that you can cancel if you can, so you can adjust your plans. So. Every year, about half of our incoming students are from out of state. We understand this. I promise you, it is very possible to make plans now that are within one or two days, and then you'll arrive. Okay? And if you have any trouble, let us know. We'll give you some individualized attention. We want you to have a stress-free experience. Worst thing to do is start stressed. No need to. We've done this before, lots of times, about 7,000 students a year with their families every single year. Okay? We know how to do move in. Ask us questions. Can I move in early? That's a good question. So there are certain programs that start their festivities, their proceedings early. An example might be uh, computer science has a kickstart program that I believe starts August 22nd. For those certain programs, there is an early move in date. When you're accepted to that program, and you get the invitation to go online to get the move-in time slot, you will see that for you, you can have other time slots that are earlier because we show up in your system, we see you in your system as having that early move-in date, okay? We got you covered there. If that program knows that you're in it, they'll talk to us and we will make sure you get the time slots that you need to make it. Now, there are other programs that you may be in that are having things going on on a particular day. Say August 28th, they have a plan, but there's no specific move-in day for that group. If you're in the Michigan Learning Community, there isn't a special move-in day for Michigan Learning Communities. That said, if you know you gotta be at something on the 28th, get that time slot email, go online, pull up the time slots, and pick something on the 25th, on the 26th, something that works for you. So that's another reason to be vigilant about that time slot email because ultimately you've got to make sure this works with your schedule. Uh, is it competitive to get the time slot you want? This is a great question. It's also kind of heartbreaking. You know, I, it's, it is competitive to get into the University of Michigan. A lot of you have been competing for huge chunks of your lives, for spaces, for scholarships. And of course, when it comes to moving time slots, you think, is this another thing I have to compete in? The answer is 
not really. You're not really competing. First of all, there isn't a special winning time slot. All right, you can relax a little bit. All I would say is that stay on top of that UMish email, right? There's gonna be lots of time slots that people may want more than others, but also a bunch that will work for you that probably aren't at the key times. I know from experience, people love to move in in the morning and they think, oh, why would I move in on the afternoon? Why would I move in after say 5 p.m.? Well, the truth is, if you think about it, actually Ann Arbor is a city. We've got rush hour, right? It sometimes makes a lot of sense to move in later because the streets are quiet. It's nice and smooth, right? Easy to do. So it's not competitive. You just need to stay on top of that email. And if you let it slide, yeah, you may be in a bit of a pickle to find the space that you want. But again, we want to make this work for you. So we'll try to make something work out if you can't find it. But the best thing to do, honestly, is be on top of that email, get the time slot you need. Again, this, uh, these time slots go live the first week of August. Question, what if you haven't got your housing assignment yet? Oh my gosh, are all the good time slots taken? The answer is no. We've got you. We actually hold back a lot of the good time slots all over the place, all over campus, so that we can offer them to the second batch of people who are still waiting on housing contracts. We got you, we thought about you. It's all we do. All, all the whole year we've been thinking about you, right before we've met you. You're welcome. How does move-in work? Uh, well, it's I don't want to I don't want to underwhelm you with how straightforward this is. You are going to pull up with your vehicle. Maybe it's a taxi. Maybe it's an Uber. I don't know. You're going to pull up to the residence hall you have been assigned in. You're going to get out of that vehicle. Right, we'll, we'll flag you to a little spot there. Get that vehicle. There'll be these blue bins on wheels that you can borrow. Put your stuff, wheel it to your room, and we will then direct you to a spot where you can move that car for one or two hours while you finish the rest of your arranging of the things inside. So you pull in, give yourself about 30 minutes to do the job of unloading that vehicle, and then move the car to another lot nearby for another two hours or so. It's as simple as that. Oh, the difficult part of moving are the powerful human emotions, understandable emotions that are happening on all of us in move-in. But the actual logistics is pretty straightforward. You live over there, go there, get the stuff out of the car, put it in the 11 by 11 roughly room that you'll be living in. This is not the time to work in detail in your room setup. That can happen to students after your parents go, your family members go, because do you really want their opinion? Not really. You moved out of the house. They can't tell you what to do. All right. What do I need to do before move in? All right, first of all, you need to get that move in time slot, first week of August. Second, when you get that move in time slot, you'll also be able to print out this unloading permit that you put in the windshield of your car. All right, very important. This, this document is what they're gonna look at when you pull up to the building and say, ah, there you are. We expecting this family at this particular time perfect we got it right here everything is all set for you it also gives us an indication of what m cards to get ready in the back end there and the keys to prep for you so get that printable unloading permit i say unloading in that funny over emphatic way because it is not a parking permit it's a permit to chill out in that area for 30 minutes tops oh if you're shipping should you be shipping ship if you want to lots of people ship everything now but don't ship it now Aim to get those packages to arrive within one or two days before your arrival. We will open the package rooms in the buildings one or two days really before move-in starts, okay? So just have that package arrive just a little bit before you, or if you can hold out, order it after you arrive. It's ultimately up to you. Uh, it is now time to get to your questions, but I have one more question that I want to answer because it's important. It's what's the fastest way to get an answer to my question? No one submitted that one. I just feel like it's an important one to answer. Uh, we, there's lots of ways to get in touch with us. You can call us. Uh, you can go through the housing website, which is a great way. It's a little contact form there. Right now, emailing us at housing at umich.edu is the fastest way to get your answer. And the benefit of that is that if you email us from your umich email account, you've kind of authenticated already. We know it's actually you. If you're emailing from your school email account, high school email account, we don't know it's really you, so we can't always make the changes to your application you may be asking for, right? Think about it, makes perfect sense. Also, if you go on the housing website and search for whatever it is you're looking for first, 
there's also be an option to contact us and you may be even be able to live chat with us if we're online. I would love to chat with you and I'll be one of those people who are in the back end there answering questions. So with that, I'm going to take a little bit of water here and then transition to the questions that you have been uh, populating in the Q&A. And you know, you can do it right now. So let's think. Uh, good question. Can I have helpers help me during move-in? Absolutely. You may have helpers help you with move-in. Following all the basic public health guidelines, of course, the same ones that apply to your campus visitors. And we really want you to try to get limit them to two helpers at a time. You'll find that honestly, our elevators are not much larger than that once you add the blue bin and you in there. So two helpers, that is reasonable. Help us keep this move-in de-densified. But yes, helping someone move in, parents, families, this is, this is the thing you've been working up to, right? Working your courage up to, working everything in your life up to this moment. Of course, you can be a part of this since the public health guidelines have made it possible, since vaccinations have made this possible. So yes, you can. Uh, someone wants information about kitchens. So I think I mentioned this earlier, but I'm gonna say it again. Okay. We do have throughout the residence halls, not all of them, some smaller kitchens, community kitchens they're called, which you can reserve or, or, or swipe into. They're again, tiny, you'll need to clean up after yourself there. They're really meant for kind of projects and get togethers. I would say that it's, if that's you thinking, is this my primary way of feeding myself? Not ideal, I'll be honest, because there's a lot of cleanup. It's not gonna be necessarily close to your room and you'll need to have a lot of cleaning supplies to make that possible. And of course, remember, if you live in housing, uh, your meal plan is obligatory. So it's already built in. Just know that kitchens though, after being closed this past year for health reasons, are going to be reopened this fall, all right? So, uh, other, some other questions here are because they're coming into the Q&A. My helpers are going to let us know where they're coming in. Oh, someone here has a, one of my colleagues has a clarification. They're saying package rooms, hold on, hold on. They're not open that much before arrival. What I meant was if you're arriving on the 29th, have that package arrive, say on the 27th of August. That's all I meant. Try to time that package to arrive with you. Just know that. Because if it arrives right now, who knows what will happen to it? There'll be no one to intercept it. Do yourself a favor, time that package to arrive at the same time you do. So what other questions do we have here? It, um, actually, Amir, uh, sorry to yeah. interrupt. Hey. Uh, hey, so my name is Amy Gothier. I'm the Deputy Director of Housing. I did want to just jump in and talk a little bit about packages. Sorry, Amir. Um, and this is not Amir's fault. This was just a last minute change. Um, but package rooms are actually open beginning August 30th. So Ooh. if you have essential items that you need for the first week when you arrive, please make sure you bring them with you. Um, and then you'll have access to all other items beginning August 30th. That is hot off the presses. Hot off the presses. That is, that is, this is, thank you for joining this webinar, people, because you're getting information that I don't even have. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank no you. No problem. Fantastic. So just arrive with stuff, order stuff. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. We'll work it out. So what other questions, what other questions do you have? I'm ready. I'll answer them. And guess what? If I answer them wrong, someone magically will appear to correct me. What other question we've got? I'm excited about this. This is good. It's like a trivia game where I could lose. Oh, so here's a good question. Uh, what about room dimensions? When will I know about that? So some approximate room dimensions will come in that first week of August email to help you plan. So you can expect that around then. I would say if you're looking for room dimensions because you're thinking about how much stuff can I bring, you're probably bringing too much stuff. Uh, and it's good to just scale that back. If you're thinking room dimensions because I want to get carpet, it's a tough one. I'd say carpet's a tough one. Our floors are often a pretty nice laminate, wood-like laminate wherever you go. Uh, the reason that carpet's not always the best in a residence hall room is that you have to vacuum it, right? And things get underneath the beds. You want to vacuum it for quality of air. You can borrow vacuums at the community center. That's awesome. But maybe an area rug is the better way to go. Uh, question here, are there closets? I didn't hear, see that you mentioned a closet. Uh, the answer is that while every room has a bed, a chair, a desk, a dresser, there is not necessarily a closet. There could be a wardrobe or a closet-like thing. 
The best way to think about what to bring is to anticipate bringing the stuff that you'll need up until you go home again to get more stuff. So if you're planning to go home during the Thanksgiving break, let's say, if that's your plan, just bring stuff that will get you to that point. And maybe it's not your full on winter stuff yet. Just bring stuff for there and then get a sense of how much space is left in your room. Uh, let's see, someone wants to know, um, what are the chances, again, that two people can room together if they request each other based on what they're studying? This is a good one. I, I don't think I mentioned it. Housing doesn't actually assign based on your school or college. So when we look at a roommate request, we're not like, do you know what? They want to room together, but also they're studying the anthropology of ancient Georgia. Now, we don't look at that. We just say these two students want to room together and we want to try to make it happen as much as possible. If they both got their assignments, they may not know until that first week of August email what that, those assignments are going to be. Let's see, some other questions here. Um, now, let's see. Can we get two fridges in the room instead of a microwave and a fridge? As I said, it really depends on the number of rooms in your unit. Uh, really one fridge, one microwave per room. Love the thinking though. So you know what? I don't like things that are hot. I only want twice as many things cold. Fortunately, won't be able to oblige you if all you've got is a double room. So this is a really good one. How long do parents usually stay when they are coming from out of town to have enough time to get the student settled? Whoa, this is an important question. So I would say that there is no official amount of time to stay. There is no, I put this a better way. There's no wrong way to be a parent here. There's really no wrong way to do it. If you want to drop your student off at the airport and say, have a great college experience, see you at Thanksgiving, that is fine. You wanna drop them off at the door of the residence hall and go and enjoy Ann Arbor, that is fine. If you wanna stay for the week, just kind of be in close proximity to help them, that also is fine. There really is no average and there's no sense that you should be doing something or missing out. The second your student arrives, Honestly, there is so much for them to do. Students, you're going to be whisked away by your RAs or your hallmates right away, okay, to do stuff, to meet people, to explore campus. If you arrive on the 27th, classes start, I think, on the 30th. So that's not a ton of time to get to explore campus. That's your number one priority. So families may be expecting to have lots of dinners and get-togethers with their students. I'm going to tell you, it often doesn't pan out. But that's actually not a bad thing, because that means that you, after you've helped your student move in those first few hours, you are free to enjoy Ann Arbor, a beautiful place to be, lots of good things to eat, stroll around, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy what you've done, the accomplishment. Uh, when should students start checking their UMish email for their dorm contract and move-in info? So those are two, two separate things. Check your UMish email every day. I, Monday through Friday, how's that? We are not gonna send you a contract on Saturday or Sunday. Uh, once a day sounds great, if you can. That seems more than reasonable. I'd say that first week of August, definitely keep an eye on that email. Be attentive to it. I, I don't want you to make it into a thing. I'd say this, if you're worried about it, you're fine, paradoxically, because you are exactly the kind of person who's on top of things. The students who aren't paying attention to this, who aren't even logged into this webinar, they're the ones who, Need to tighten it up a little bit. We're there for them, but you can relax. Uh, if a student is in a marching band, do they pick their own move-in time or is that dictated by the band? Marching band, very separate, special thing. Check in with the marching band coordinator there because they have a different kind of move-in set up where they arrive early and the band is together and then they move into their rooms, which could be all over campus. But it's important in the past for the marching band to be together for a part. So often they drop off their things and may have a bag with them for overnight uh, where they go to their other site where they're with all the other band members. Ultimately, go to that program. If you've got other questions like uh, Navy ROTC that starts early as well, double check with that program and they will have a, a move-in plan for you. Typically, since you're arriving early, move-in time slots are a little looser. It's like the morning you're arriving before noon, then we have lunch and get this program started. So the program is a source there. And if your program tells us that you're in that program, we've got you covered. Uh, someone asks, let's see, is there a video link? We can watch this video again. I, that's the nicest thing anyone has ever said to me. 
This really is. The, the confidence that this is going to end well is remarkable. Thank you. Uh, the answer is I fully believe there is. Absolutely. This will live on forever, including my uh, flub of the package rooms forever on the internet. Uh, how do we, ooh, this is really good. How do we label packages if we would like to mail items to our rooms? So all you need for your package really is your name and the address of the residence hall. So your room number will come in that first week of August email. You can also add that. But that's all you need. Your name, residence hall address, right? West Quad, 501 West Thompson Street, Ann Arbor 48109. It's probably the wrong address, but that's all you need. That's all you need. And it will go to that package room. Let's see. Oh, someone wants to say, yes, we're going to post this video on the Getting to Know Michigan site. Uh, perfect. Is it too late to request a roommate? It's not too late to ask. It's not too late to ask. Have you and that roommate email housing at umich.edu, one copying the other one, and say, here's our UMIDs. We're requesting each other, and we will do our best. Again, it's really tough if you've already been assigned. But if it's a preference, let us know. We try to make dreams come true. Can't always, but that's, that's the business of making magic happen, right? We have to know. What type of keys do you use? It's a great question. And how do you replace it if lost? So to get into the buildings, you're going to use an M card, which is your student ID card. You swipe in there. Only students who live in that building will be authorized to get into, uh, into the spaces with the residential parts of the building using their M cards. Once you're there, though, there's a whole other key card for the rooms, which has, in addition, a four-digit PIN. Each roommate has their own key card and their own four-digit PIN. If you've got a problem with your key card, the community center, which is the front desk, kind of the operations hub of every building, you go to that community center and they will sort you out. Yes, you lose keys. It sometimes happens. Don't let it happen too much. You know, it could be a sign of some other things that we could help you with. But hold on to that key, but it's not the end of the world if you lose it. I, Amy knows this. I had a room in West Quad. My office was there. I lost my key three times. No, I didn't lose it. I left it in the room, then the door closed behind me. The doors, by the way, shut automatically, securely after you close them automatically. And that is the safest way to keep your valuables safe. So we don't have safes in the room or lockable compartments within rooms. But at the same time, there has been no record of any theft from a room while the door was closed. So whatever was behind the room to keep your item safe was not actually safer than the door itself. Again, these are very personal choices. Uh, one, a couple of last questions there. Will third-party shipping companies have access to the rooms before move-in? Fantastic question. So there is one company that we work with that is authorized to do this. That is John's Pack and Ship. John's Pack and Ship. Again, we have a contract with them, long-standing relationship, and they are able to get some things into the residence halls uh, before you arrive. But by and large, if you have something sent by Amazon ahead of time, no, it can't go into that room. Can we move in before August 25th? Yes, if you are in a particular program uh, that has early move-in. But if it just kind of works for you, unfortunately, we don't have that av available because we don't have all the services and the staffing for these for individuals showing up. But for programs, we are able to do some early move-ins. Ah, do we have a small storage space along with our room? Uh, for example, sports equipment not allowed in rooms, fencing equipment, et cetera. Awesome question. First of all, if it's not allowed in your room, it's not allowed in the residence hall in general. So you have like, you know, long knives. It's not like they just can't be in the room. They just can't be in the residence hall. But let's say you've got hockey equipment. Uh, there are not actually lock, secure lockers or storage areas in the residence halls for that stuff. It's got to be in your room if it's an allowed item or some other location. Uh, let's, do the, let's do one last question. So, uh, will there, let's see, is there also going to be in-person orientation during move-in dates? So, that's a great one. So, really, I'd say keep an eye on emails from the University of Michigan and from housing. We are evolving all the time how we're going to get content to you. We know this isn't the last of your questions. We know as, as parents and families have a lot of questions, too, that they've been kind of holding back on before they ask. 
feel free to ask us at any time. We may have more opportunities, may have some more in-person things. It's all being developed right now. But I want to close by saying we love your questions. Live for your questions, right? Email us at housing at umich.edu. We will get to them. I may be answering those questions. Again, my name is Amir Baghdachi. And you'll see that. You'll see Amir is answering your question or any number of the amazing people on the team. Sam, Kai, Quinn, Matt, Lindsay, Shane. So it's, it's, a, it's an amazing gallery of talent out there answering housing questions. This has been a ton of fun. I think we're at our time, three o'clock crisp. And if I've generated more questions, that is good. That was my goal because you were now thinking about moving. This is going to be your home. We are so excited for you to join us. This is an amazing experience. I feel like it's actually happening now. We've done this webinar. And with that, thank you very, very much. Welcome home. Welcome to Michigan Housing. Thanks.